What's up, YouTube? Bruno Wolf here. I was just thinking about this crazy video idea, and I want to get it out to you guys. There's two different types of parries, and I want to talk about it. So there is reactive parries and proactive parries, meaning there's one that you can react to, and there's one that you would have to predict. And we're going to go over this, talk about this. I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible, and let's just jump right into it and do it. There's so many questions that I get in the stream. This is why I want to make this video. When I'm streaming, I have so many questions like, how do you how do you parry this? How do you parry that? How do you do this? The thing is, sometimes you can't you can't just look for something and parry it. For example, uh, if Kinnon has two stacks on you and he uses his W to stun you, you, you can't. You just can't parry that realistically 10 out of 10 times. Uh, Darius pool, damn near impossible. Set E, impossible. There's so many things where it is more proactive than reactive. So the Aatrox lane is pretty self-explanatory, right? The Aatrox lane, we can actually see his Q come down. We can see the ability, and that is a reactive parry because we can react to that ability and stun it, right? So this would be a perfect example of a reactive parry. So we see the Q come down. We can slide parry into it, or we can just parry into it, and we get the kill. Jax, oh, this is a great one. Now let's actually like just just take a second to read the ability right if your parries all incoming attacks disables the negative effects for 0.75 seconds and then when we look at Jax's e after two seconds or recasting Jax stuns nearby enemies for one second so he can recast it after a second and then there's a window from one second to two seconds so there is that quarter second where we can't we can't stun him right so this is where we're looking for the the proactive side of parrying we're looking for patterns we are looking for patterns from our enemy and our enemy, as, as, as you get lower elo, you're going to notice this more. And like silver, gold, bronze, whatever it may be, <clears throat> typically your enemy is going to be trying to stun you. Like, uh, let's say an enemy jacks is going to be using their E immediately or holding it for the full two seconds and not even realize that they're doing that. Not even realize that they are set in a pattern and it's going to be, you'll be able to stun them every time over and over and over again because they don't, they don't realize it. So as you get into higher elo, <clears throat> you have to start noticing, you have to take it, from a, that proactive, that predictive standpoint where you're going to notice this person's pattern, you're going to hit him a few times with the parry and get that stun, and then they're going to change. Then they're going to switch and they're going to realize it, and then you have to change your pattern. So you got to start parrying later or parrying earlier or whatever it may be. So we just didn't, right? We just didn't parry there because we counted it out and he did it early. Now, if he was to do that again and we notice, okay, he just did that two times in a row. Well, the next time he goes in for his E, then we're going to stun early. We're going to stun right at the one second mark when he recasts and we're going to get the stun. So that's like a perfect example, right? Okay, Yone. Yone is a reactive parry because the 2Q, it's very easy to see. And the R is the rectangle and it hits you. And you know that's coming. You know that's coming. So you can always stun that because it's reactive. The Darius pool. The Darius pool. So a lot of times what I notice from Darius is, is that they'll try to wait until their pool is at max length. When it's at max length, that's typically when they'll pull because you're about to get away. They usually don't pull you when you're already standing on top of them because you don't need they don't need to pull you because you're already right in front of them. So they can do damage to you, right? But when you get to a point where you're too far away, that's when it you'll typically see the Darius try to pull. Which if you notice that, then you can start parrying that. So notice how it's full length. He waited until I was max length away, and he had done it earlier in the game. I remember this is a few days ago. Um, so he uses two abilities. This is, a, this, this is a pattern that we can look for, though, right? We can look for the pattern because there's no way I'm reacting to that E. It's just too fast. But what he was doing is he's walking up, getting the slow with the W, then hitting the Q, and then trying to pull. And this is max length. So if I parry it, and even if he doesn't, this is max length. And if I have Q, then I can Q backwards and get away. So I'm pretty sure he does this a few other times as well. Um, so we're looking at it and we're looking for, now that he's done that pattern, we are looking for the max range E. So when he does it again right here, he misses it, but it's something that we take into account as we're playing this lane. It's something we got to pay attention to. He does it right there. He's trying to get the max range E once again, once again, because it just kind of throws you off. It's kind of like you don't expect it, right? Max range tries to pull tries to pull, but it, it's those patterns. And that's the, what makes those predictive parries, those proactive parries things that we got to pay attention to. And as you play against a new a new player or a new person in lane, you have to readjust. You have to readjust to be paying attention from level one in lane, looking for patterns and looking for when you're going to use your parry against abilities like that. So let's see. Let's watch this now. Notice how I'm trying to bait him to pull me. But he's not. You see how I'm trying to stay on that corner, trying to really play with it. This time he just doesn't pull. See, he broke his pattern, 
But instead, he used a czar, which was fine. But he broke his pattern there. He broke his pattern there, but I was playing with it. I was trying to get him to do it. I was trying to get him on that very edge of the range there for him to use his E so I could stun him. And it's just a pattern that I've noticed throughout the lane where I could possibly get the stun and get the kill. Um, now, obviously, this is the Darius lane, and it's something that you kind of... there. God, this is a perfect game for this. It's insane. Uh, he does it again. So we're max range. He does the same combo. Notice patterns that's what we've been looking for the entire game notice how he's going to hit me with the w auto w q pull auto w q pull proactive parries best thing that you can do on fiora is start getting accustomed to learning your enemies patterns in lane everybody has patterns and be able to readjust yours it's a hard concept to understand reactive parries listen i'm going to be real with you here if you're over, if you're in the 60, if you're like in the 60, 70, 80 ping range, it's almost, it's so impossible to play Fiora. And I, I hate to say that as a Fiora main and tell somebody that they shouldn't play Fiora with high ping, but it's just, it's not, you're not going to be able to play the champion to its full potential because there are reactive parries and you need to be able to react to big animations, big animations like Garen, Garen Q, even Garen R, it's a massive animation. You have enough time to actually get your uh, parry off. Imagine Camille hookshot when she jumps off the wall at you. You can see her flying towards you. Camille R, you can see her jump up. That is an animation. That is a reactive parry. But things like this that are really fast, even if you're in the higher your ping gets, the more you got to be paying attention. Start paying attention to your enemy's patterns. Start paying attention to your own patterns. Grasp the concept and start adjusting while you're in lane and you'll notice your parries getting better and better. <clears throat> Something I want to say before I end this video is that the biggest tool in Fiora's kit is her parry. And the difference between a good Fiora and a bad Fiora is the way that she uses it. So I hope that you can take this video and understand this concept of reactive and proactive parries. Take it into your ranked games, start watching your enemy laners patterns and start improving your parries. And you'll notice that you win more games, you win more lanes and you get those leads a lot easier in lane. So that is the video. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, peace out. Goodbye.